The risen Christ is with us. Amen? Amen. Let's worship God today. that warms your heart in this cold sanctuary, right? I want to thank everybody for their patience. Um, sometimes when things break, you can't get parts replaced on a weekend, um, and so it's a little chilly in here today, um, but I'm glad to see you all bundled up. If anybody needs a blanket, we have a few up here. So, um, Welcome to Memorial United. I'm Ron Beaton, the pastor here, and, uh, and it's a joy to be with you as we worship God today on Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Today we're going to hear about when Jesus was baptized, what that means for us, and, uh, and, and how it might change our life moving forward. Um, I want to extend a special welcome to any guests who are with us today. If you are a guest, 
We hope that you'll fill out a Connect card in the attendance pad um, so we can get to know you a bit better. There may be some in the back of the seats as well. Um, But we're particularly glad you're here, uh, and uh, we have a gift for you on your way out the door. But thanks for joining us this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh, nice. Let's pray. Most gracious and holy God, your son Jesus Christ got into the waters of the Jordan to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, just like um, all others had, even though he was the perfect son of God. Um, We give you thanks that Jesus is willing to come and be in solidarity with us, that Jesus was willing to take on the sins of the world. And we pray, we praise you for that. And that's one of the reasons we gather here on Sunday morning. We pray that your Holy Spirit guides us now, guides our worship, and that it may be pleasing in your sight. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, let's stand as we continue to sing. Almighty God, as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, may we hear with joy what you have to say to us today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you do you come to me? 
But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I'm starting my sermon um, a little different than I had planned prior to this morning. Um, This is uh, a Dutch cradle cross. Um, And in uh, amongst the Dutch, it's not uncommon to have these and they'll hang above a crib or a cradle. um, And they're given to children when they're baptized. 
so that as they're laying there, um, even then they'll see this cross and be reminded of their baptism and who they are. Um, And so sometimes we'll give these to babies who are baptized here in the church. And uh, these crosses were made by Reverend Pete Sullins. And Pete died this past week. And um, so I thought it would be a nice way just to see that beautiful gift that he um, gave to the church and has passed on and, um, and remember a little bit about his commitment to the gospel of Jesus and um, the good news of Jesus Christ. And think of all of the children that he baptized in his many years as a United Methodist pastor. And so um, Pete was a faithful member of this church in retirement or attended regularly for this church and um, was really an important part of the church. And so I'm just grateful for Pete and that's just wanted to celebrate him and his life today. His service funeral will be on Tuesday in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. And so I hope some of you all come and support um, his family, support Connie um, as we celebrate his life and give thanks for resurrection. So anyway, today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. It's a remarkable scene in the scripture. So John John the Baptist protested the idea of, you know, baptizing the long-awaited-for Messiah for the forgiveness of sins, but Jesus insisted. And so John acquiesced and baptized Jesus in the River Jordan. So if you've been there, I don't know if any of you all have been on like a trip to the Holy Land. Um, If you've been there, you know how unremarkable the Jordan River can be. Um, Pictures of the Jordan River often remind me of a floodway ditch and the Missouri boot heel (laughs) more than it does some beautiful river. Um, And we know that it was John the Baptist who baptized Jesus because Jesus came up out of the water. If it was John the Methodist, he would have just poured some water on his head and given him a towel to wipe his face. Um, That's a joke. Um, So Jesus comes out of the water, right, as the Hebrew people had done so many times before. The Hebrew people came up out of the water when they came through the Red Sea, right? When they were fleeing Pharaoh's army, leaving slavery. And they came up out of the Jordan River, that very river that Jesus was baptized in when the Hebrew people followed Joshua and the Ark of the Covenant into the Promised Land. And now Jesus is coming out of that very water. And what a scene it was, right? The heavens tore open. How exactly does that happen? What does that mean? The sky was rent asundered. Rent asundered. Were the bystanders, did they get views of angels walking around? Or did they see the streets of gold? What was up there? Or or did they just see a beautiful light? Was it serene? Or was it terrifying, right? You've maybe heard me talk about thin places before. Places, uh, in the Celtic Christians would talk about thin places where the space between heaven and earth are really thin. Jesus' baptism was the ultimate thin place. Was there light that shined down on Jesus from this ripped open heaven? Or did light radiate from Jesus himself? And the Spirit of God descending like a dove, not as not in the form of a dove, but like a dove. Um, what is it like when a dove descends, right? We've seen a dove kind of flap its way to where it's going. Is it intentional, maybe, um, to be like a dove? Was it symbolic of peace? But when it lands with its wings flapping back to forth, um, is it more chaotic, frantic? You know, I picture the, I think of all the paintings of Jesus, of Jesus' baptism, and the spirits descending on God, on Jesus. It kind of looks like the the dove is dive bombing Jesus. It reminds me more of like a blue jay that's attacking you after it got too close to its nest more than it does like a, uh, a peaceful dove. Paintings, that was what that reminds me of. Um, when the spirit descended... I wonder if it was reminiscent for the people who were there of the dove from Noah's Ark, right? Noah sent out a dove and then it comes back, right? And it descends on the ark with one solitary olive branch in its mouth, letting people know that this was the beginning of new life, the beginning of a new covenant. Is this dove-like spirit in Jesus' baptism letting us know that there is new life, a new hope, a new promise, a new covenant? 
Then if that weren't enough, this voice booms from heaven. Or was it a still small voice? Was it the James Earl Jones, right? This is my son, my beloved, right? With whom I am well pleased. Or was it something much more simple than that? You know, the word Trinity, we talk about the Trinity, we believe in the Trinity. The word Trinity is never mentioned in the Bible. Um, That's kind of a doctrine that we come to the conclusion of our understanding later in church history. Um, But here in this scene, we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, and yet in perfect union at Jesus' baptism. What a perfect, fantastic story. And now it's story time with Pastor Ron. Are you ready? So the first baptism I ever performed was with a young teenager um, who had come to faith at church camp, didn't have a real great family life. And he was not a member of the church that I served, but rather he was attending a Methodist church 10 miles down the road from where I was first appointed. Um, And the lay pastor of that congregation was not ordained or credentialed to officiate a baptism. So he called me a week or two before I'd even started. I hadn't even preached my first sermon out of seminary yet. Um, And I get this phone call and say, hey, I might need you to help with this baptism. So the candidate for baptism wanted to be immersed, um, baptized by immersion. So we brought in a cow trough to the sanctuary. We tried to make it look as pretty as we can, you know, like lipstick on a pig kind of thing, right? Um, And then that Sunday... um, and then the day before, he and I and Casey, we made bread together in our house that would be used for communion the next day. Um, and then the people from his church came to our congregation that day and celebrated and, um, him and promised to pray for him and support him and encourage him. We had a potluck afterwards. It was beautiful. And God was there. The next story is the story of Bill. Bill was the 70-year-old husband of the church secretary in Appleton City, my first appointment. He was a beloved figure in the town. He was the postmaster in Appleton City for decades, um, so he knew everybody. And in retirement, he worked with his sons at their automotive detail and dent removal shop, right? And so he got to work with his brother or with his sons in retirement. Not long after I got there, Bill was diagnosed with terminal cancer. His wife was a faithful member of the church, but Bill hadn't darkened the door of a church in years. He didn't grow up going to church. Um, But when he was confronted with his mortality, his devout Catholic son said, You know, maybe you should have a talk with Pastor Ron. Um, And we did talk. In fact, Bill and I became really good friends. Um, I'd hang out with him and his sons. His sons were just a little older than me. And we'd hang out at their shop on Friday afternoons and kind of shoot the breeze at the end of a long work week. Um, We went to some Royals games together. We were on that side of the state. So we went to Kauffman Stadium a few times. I baptized him on Christmas Eve. Perfect day, right, to celebrate new birth. Bill rarely missed a Sunday after that. He was there every chance he could worked and did things in the church, and Bill died about a year and a half later. His baptism was beautiful. God was there. The following Christmas Eve, seven months after Bill's death, I baptized Bill's 96-year-old mother, Lita. She too started coming to the church, and she came faithfully every week until she was unable to and and died. It was beautiful. God was there. I'm also reminded of the time a parishioner's brother moved to town and was dying, and I spent time chatting with him, and I discovered he had an earnest faith, um, but one that was not at the forefront of his priority list. But as he began staring death in the face, um, death has a way of reorganizing your priorities sometimes. And so we had a date for him to be baptized, but that date never came. I got a call that he had taken a turn for the worse, and so I grabbed a bowl, I grabbed some, you know, some water, and I went to the nursing home. I found him there, um, labored breathing, a high heart rate. He was incoherent. Um, I baptized him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
And it was kind of surreal. At that moment, his heart rate slowed. His breath kind of eased. His breathing eased a bit. I prayed um, with him, spent a little time with him, and then I immediately left the nursing home and went to his sister's apartment to tell her about what I had just done. And when she opened the door for me, she gets a phone call. It was a nurse telling her that he had just died. It was beautiful. God was there. I could tell the story about the time I baptized somebody in a pond and a carp swam between my legs. I could tell about the time that I baptized Genevieve Mays in the sanctuary over there and she was pooping as I poured water on her head. I could tell about the time that the bishop baptized my own daughter, Hannah, and there at the baptism was Eldridge Bartley, a man who was a retired United Methodist pastor, and 100 years before that date, he was baptized at annual conference by the bishop celebrating 100 years of Methodism in Missouri. And now here we were, 200 years later, and this long story continues. I could talk about baptizing five babies, several, some of whom are in this room now in just a few months, or when I baptized our drummer and our postal carrier and our church's oldest member who's going to turn 104 next month. All these baptisms were beautiful. God was there. But they weren't beautiful because they were spectacular. They were that, and that's part of the reason I remember those so clearly. But what makes, what makes them beautiful is that these people are getting wet with the same waters that Jesus came up out of, baptismal waters. Well, each of our individual stories differ, right? They're different from the next. Baptism makes us all characters in God's bigger story. In baptism, we're all swept up into the waters of faith, carried along by the same river of grace. You know, it's odd that Jesus, right, the perfect and pure Messiah and Son of God, would be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, right? He had no sins to be forgiven of, but he did, and it was beautiful. Um, the famous theologian Karl Barth, probably the most important theologian of the 20th century, um, said, quote, Jesus was not being theatrical. When Jesus was baptized, he needed to be washed of sin, not his sin, but our sin. When faced by the sins of all others, he did not let these sins be theirs. But as the son of his father, ordained from all eternity to be brother of these fatal brethren, caused them to be his own sin. No one who came to the Jordan was as laden and afflicted as he. I like that. In other words, Jesus was not coming for the baptism of his own sin, but he came to be in solidarity with the sinners whom God had sent him to save. He came to take on the sins of the world. Jesus took on flesh, joined us in the muck of life, not to destroy the muck, but to clean it. Not merely to rid the world of filth, but to redeem it. To take a messy creation, and this world is messy, and renew it. And so Jesus gets in the filthy, muddy waters of the Jordan River to be with us. Jesus becomes one with us, and so he is declared beloved. And because he's declared beloved, we too are beloved by God. You are beloved by God because Jesus is beloved. You're beloved because Jesus loves you. And we know this because Jesus jumped in the waters with you, came to bring us together all as one. I hope you know how loved you are. I hope after all of these Christmas sermons, and the Epiphany sermons, and on the baptism of the Lord sun, Sunday sermons, I hope you know how much God wants to be with you in every aspect of your life, not only when life is good, but when it isn't. 
when you've been faithful and when you haven't, God loves you so much that he sent his son to be with you and never leave you, no matter what. I hope you know that God loves you regardless of what you've done or what you have not done. God hopped into the waters of baptism to stand alongside you, to make all of the world, all of this messy world, a thin place. God has torn the heavens apart. The Holy Spirit has descended to announce that Jesus is God's Son, God's beloved, with whom God is well pleased. And this beloved son wants nothing more to be with you in the mud and water, messy waters of life because through Jesus, you are beloved by God too. God has chosen each one of you to join him in the waters of baptism, to join him in the river of abundant life, to take delight in joining Jesus in the work of redemption. So that's my pitch. <laughs> and so now I ask the question. If you haven't been baptized, what's holding you back? God and Jesus invite you to join him in the water. I wonder if you might accept that invitation. I wonder if you might participate with Jesus in the work of redeeming, of restoring, of renewing. I wonder if you will put your trust in Jesus, knowing that he loves you so much that he's willing to move heaven and earth, to rip apart the sky, to walk with you. I wonder if your individual story, complex, boring, placid, frantic, sad, joyful as it may be, all the above as it may be, may be just one stream that flows into God's larger river of salvation. Which, I guess that's the church's story too, right? The church is a bunch of folks, from newborn babies to 103, seeking to follow Jesus through loving God and loving each other. Now, we don't always get it right. In fact, we often don't get it right. But we know that God's grace keeps moving us towards that perfect union with God. The Father who spoke from heaven, the Son who's in the water, and the Spirit that's descending like a dove. I wonder if you might allow God to enter into a covenant with you. So uh, if the waters of baptism is something you might be interested in, if you want to enter into a covenant with God, covenant that God initiated, I hope you'll drop maybe a connect card in the offering plate today. You can email me, you can call me, get in touch with me however you want. Um, Jesus came to be with us in this mess. And so if you want to join Jesus in the baptism, in the baptismal waters, it will be beautiful. And God will be there. And to everyone else, I want you to remember that you are a part of this story. I want you to remember how beloved you are by God. Remember that you were baptized. And be thankful. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. On baptism of the Lord's Sunday, I like to do something um, we don't do but maybe a couple times during the year. That's a baptismal renewal service. Um, and here in a minute, um, I'm going to ask you the questions that we ask people when they're baptized and to reaffirm um, your baptismal covenant, um, at reaffirm the baptismal covenant. And, uh, and then I'm going to invite you to come forward. Stick your hands in the water and recall your baptism. If you're not baptized, I invite you to come forward too. If you'd like, you don't have to, but I invite you to come forward too. Touch the waters and just dwell on whether 
God may be working in your life, um, bringing you um, to that covenant relationship. So um, I'm going to turn to page 50 and begin asking you some questions. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift to us, given to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. But here's the baptismal vows. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened up to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful to Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. Let's join together in professing the Christian faith is contained in the scriptures of the Old Testament. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? If so, say, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into the heavens, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. If so, say, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, say, I do. The Lord be with you. And with you. Let's pray. Eternal Father, When nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured him in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, and to make disciples of all the nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our life, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. So I'm going to invite you to come forward, much like we do at communion, to come and place your hands in the water. Um, I'll say, remember your baptism and be thankful. And then you can make the sign of the cross, maybe hold your wet hand close to your heart, whatever feels most comfortable to you, and then you can just make your way back around to the seat, to your seat. Please come. Let's all stand together as the praise band sings as we go.
As we give of our tithes and offerings today um, as a forgiven and reconciled people, I want to remind you that there's three ways that you can give. You can give in the offering plate as it's passed around. You can also text your offering to 73256 and put in the message Memorial UMC, one word, and then the amount you want to give. Or you can go to our website, memorialumc.church. Let's give of ourselves to God and each other. You may remain seated as we sing. Hit, hit, rising up deep inside a current that's blue. 
As we enter into a time of prayer, um, I, I'm going to do something a little different uh, today. We've done this a few times, um, and I can do things different because I'm in charge. Um, so uh, today, during our prayers of the people, there'll be a period of the prayer where I invite you to lift up names of those who are on your hearts or minds. There's a lot of folks on our prayer list, um, and so if there's people or events in your life or around the world that you want to lift up to God, you can simply say that name or briefly mention that. And um, then at the end of that portion of the prayer, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and we'll all say, hear our prayer. Okay, so let's give that a go. Most gracious and holy God, we give you thanks that you came to earth and got in the baptismal waters with us. We give you thanks that you're willing to do so much to be with us, to be in a relationship with us, to lead us and guide us um, into your way of love. And we give you thanks that you love us and that God loves you and we love you back. We pray for all of those on our hearts and minds this day, people who are hurt, sad, sick, who are lonely, people who are suffering, um, enduring much, and so we lift those names up before you now. And all others that remain on our hearts who are unspoken. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all the blessings of, of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
for the means of grace, baptism, communion, and our place in your church. We pray that we may live as faithful disciples with the Holy Spirit working in us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Y'all got one more before we head out? Let's stand and sing. sassy on that one. That was nice. <laughs> I invite everybody to take a look at the bulletin to all the announcements in the life of the church. One that I don't know that's on there, but I wanted to highlight um, a new one is at the end of this month, the missions team is going to be having a chili cook-off competition. So you can come bring your chili. Um, uh, I don't know. Does anybody else have any more information about that? It's the 28th, I think. Yes. What is it? I just remember it from the last service. It's the 28th. It's the 28th. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, be sure it will have, there'll also be chili and then vegetable soup. Come taste those. All the money that is uh, raised for that goes to local missions um, and ministry or goes to the ministries of the missions team. And so hope you'll be on the lookout for that and perhaps um, make some chili. So go forth from this place. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling. And to make you stand without blemish in the presence of its glory with rejoicing. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ the Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Thanks for enduring the cold.
See you next week. Bro.